Hey guys, I am so excited for this video today. I know it has been a while since we have done a devotional or Bible study together, and I know you guys love that stuff. So when I was going through Proverbs the other day, I thought, I want to film this and I want to take you a bit of an inside look, I guess, into how I study the Bible, how I um, get words that are in scripture and um, look at the deeper definitions and the meaning behind them and use tools to actually make sure I can actually understand what I'm reading and understand my Bible study so I can get the most out of it. And ultimately, so I can get to know God more and his, his will for my life and how I should live. So I hope that is cool with you. If you have your Bible, pull, pull it out go grab your Bible, go get it now. If you um, don't have a physical Bible, you can get it on your phone. I use an app called the Bible app. It's super, super easy to download. Go get that now and turn to Proverbs with me. A little bit of a background as to why I'm studying Proverbs. So this month, it's the month of May and my church is going through um, a chapter of Proverbs each day. So we're doing uh, 31 days through Proverbs. It just so happens that Proverbs has 31 chapters. So it's perfect for the month of, the, of May. I'm loving diving into a chapter each day and getting to understand all of the wisdom that is inside Proverbs because that is what it is all about. All right, so turn with me to Proverbs 1. I am using this Bible here, which I love. Um, I hope you can see that. Proverbs 1, it's actually the Color Sisterhood Bible. It's an NIV Bible, so that's what I'll read from. And I want to read to you uh, the beginning part, which is the purpose and the theme behind Proverbs as a book. All right, let's read from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. And then in verse seven, it goes on to say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so we are setting up the whole tone for this book. We can see that the proverbs is for us to gain wisdom and instruction. And as Christians, that's what we want. We want to gain wisdom from God, godly wisdom that we can apply to our lives so that we can live in a way that honors God. Okay, and live live good lives for him. So it is all about receiving instruction, wisdom and instruction. But in verse seven, we see it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now you might be going, I have no idea what that means. What does the fear of the Lord mean? Now I use biblestudytools.com and I use their dictionary. It is super simple for understanding words or phrases that you might want to gain more insight into. So I put fear of God into that section. You can see it here. It's a reference dictionary. You just pop it in, in the little search bar there and it will spit out that phrase and you can learn more about it. And when I did that, I want to share with you what I learned. So what does it mean to fear the Lord? Number one thing it came up with is reverence. What does reverence mean? Reverence means deep respect for someone, admiration, worship, or adoration, honor, affection, and love. So fear of God doesn't mean, oh, I'm so scared of you, God. And I know that for some of you, maybe you have had a bad experience with your earthly father. Maybe um, that was bad. And maybe you're afraid of your father and maybe coming to God and going, okay, fear of God, like this is a bit weird. What's the whole go here? Maybe that's a bit uncomfortable for you, but it says here, Fear of God means to revere him, to deeply respect, um, to admire worship or adoration, honor, affection, love. Like this is a good thing. It is a deep respect for God. And then the second thing that it says, what does it mean to fear the Lord? A second thing that it came up with is it's a motive of obedience. Okay. And we see in Proverbs 16 verse uh, six, it says through the, through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. So it is a motive to obey God. We respect and we revere God and we obey him. So fear of God is about revering God, having reverence for him and respect and, and deep adoration for him. And it's also about wanting to do his will and be obedient to his will for our lives. So I wanted to look at that whole thing and how you can actually use a Bible study tool, like a Bible dictionary to understand that a little bit more where you might be like, I don't know what fear of God means. You can look into that more and then you can um, reflect on that in your own Bible study time. Now I want to turn to verse eight and I want to read the beginning of this part to you as well. So if we look at verse eight, it says, listen, 
Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. So I, I read this here and I'm like, okay, listen to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Listen to wisdom. Do not forsake wisdom. And if you look this up, there are so many commentaries on this as well. That's talking about how Solomon was talking to his child and saying, listen, do not forsake, like, do not forsake the teaching. Do not, um, do not forsake the teaching and the godly wisdom that you have got when you were young. So it's talking to a young person, but I know that we can apply this to ourselves today. Like we can apply this no matter what age we're at, um, no matter what stage of life we're in, to not forsake the godly teaching uh, as we grow up and as, as we come out of our youth, especially for you who may be finishing high school or graduating from college, don't forsake what you have learned about God. But this can be applied to all stages of our lives. So it says, listen to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head. So uh, the first thing I thought is, what is a garland? What does that mean? I'm assuming that's like a crown, but I don't know. So so I went to my Bible dictionary again and I put in the word garland and I want to show you what it um, spit out for me, what it showed me. So I saw here that garland is another word for wreath uh, and here it says uh, they are a garland to grace your head and this says it says in in the dictionary see also crown okay so another another word that is commonly used in its place is crown and crown means um, the meaning of someone having a crown on their head is this. Its placement on one's head indicated that one was set apart for a particular task or a calling. How cool is that? That you are set apart, you have a crown. Now there's another word for crown, it's called stephanos, it's actually the Greek word for crown, it's used throughout the New Testament and it has some meanings that I want to share with you too. One is a crown, so as a crown it means a mark of royal or exalted rank. The wreath or garland, which was given as a prize to victors in public games. So this is one of the one of the ways that the wreath or the garland in its day, in this day when um, Solomon was writing Proverbs, um, and also in the New Testament, the wreath or the garland was actually given to people as as a victor. So like you have won, here is your garland, here is your wreath. We want to celebrate you. Uh, now, secondly, it's a metaphor: the eternal blessedness which will be given as a prize to the genuine servants of God and Christ. The crown or or wreath which is the reward of the righteousness so that is a reward um, to us as genuine servants of God in Christ and then the third thing it says is uh, the crown the crown that which is an ornament and honor to one so I've written some thoughts down here um, about this now understanding Stephanos okay I understand this deeper meaning and I've been able to look into that in my Bible dictionary and delve deeper into this word which came from garland okay so we looked at garland which is a wreath which also means crown and that has various meanings there and what I've written is the wreath shows the sun so who Solomon is writing to is set apart and it is a sign of a prize it is a prize to victors people who have won um, so therefore, heeding to wisdom equals winning. Heeding to wisdom equals winning because the scripture says, listen to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head. Um, they are a garland. So you, you have won when you, when you are listening to the father's instruction, um, when you're taking on your father's instruction and not forsaking your mother's teaching. You are winning. There is victory in that. And then the second part, it says, is um, there a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. So I wanted to look at what chain meant. And once again, I put it into the Bible dictionary in the search bar and I said, what is chain? Okay, let's have a look at this. It came out with this, a chain, a part of the insignia of office. A chain of gold was placed about Joseph's neck. One was promised to Daniel, we see in Daniel 5 verse 7. It is also used as a symbol of sovereignty, which we see in Ezekiel 16 verse 11. So these are my thoughts on that. So a chain is for someone who's in a higher office. It's like, okay, you have authority, you have this higher office. And I wrote a chain around someone's neck symbolizes they're a part of a higher office, a higher position, elevated to be on it. So what we learn from this scripture here in verse 8 and verse 9 is so much like we learn so much in just this small small part of scripture we learned that by listening to your father's instruction and not forsaking your mother's teaching about the godly ways and wisdom and taking on wisdom actually means that we get a garland so they are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck metaphorically speaking in scripture we we see that as i explained a crown
crown is a mark of royal or exalted rank and it's a sign of a prize that you've won and a chain is um, a part of the insignia of office so it symbolizes that you're a part of a higher office or a higher calling. So what we see here at the beginning of Proverbs 1, 1 verse 8 to 9, is the benefits of heeding to wisdom. And I really think this sets up the whole tone for what we're about to read throughout all of Proverbs. We see the benefit, okay? This is the benefit of heeding to wisdom. This is what happens. Like this is the honor in heeding to wisdom. It is good for you. And I'm not going to go through the whole rest of chapter 1. You can do that in your own time uh, using the same uh, sort of method that I've done by using a Bible dictionary. And you can use commentaries as well to support you're reading and help you understand this more but we do see from verses 10 through to 19 uh, this scripture here in verse um, Proverbs 1 verse 10 to 19 goes through the consequences. So it talks about the, cons the consequences of those who do not heed to wisdom, but those who walk along the path of the unwise and who follow their evil ways. And I could go into so much on that actually when I studied this Gosh, I went through um, Proverbs 1, verse 1 to 19, and it took me about an hour to go through all of that and unpack it. So I'm not going to take up your time and do it now, but go through that in your own time. Use those tools. Look at commentaries. Look at Bible study tools, Bible study dictionaries to help you understand the deeper meaning behind the words. Now, I know that when you come to your Bible, I know you want to understand it. I know you want to read it and you want to know God more, but it can seem so overwhelming. It's like, oh my goodness, all these words I don't know, all these things, these expressions, you know, a garland, a chain, this is so confusing, but we have tools. And it's amazing that there are people who've gone before us who have created things and like Bible dictionaries and commentaries where we can um, dive into this stuff and understand it more. We have access to so much and I don't want you to miss out on understanding scripture, understanding God's will for your life and knowing God more um, by, by just going, oh my goodness, it's too much. I'm just going to give up. I don't want that to happen um, for you. I want to encourage you to dive into the scripture and use the tools that we have access to. Now, one thing that I really want to tell you about that I am so excited about is I have been putting together a course. It is called Bible Study Breakthrough, and it is for those of you who feel overwhelmed, stressed out, like it is all just way too much to study the Bible. And basically what we're doing in Bible Study Breakthrough is helping you, I'm going to help you overcome that overwhelm. So you don't have to have overwhelm anymore when it comes to the Bible and actually get clarity when it comes to your Bible study so you can read it clearly and understand it clearly. Now, if you're thinking, oh, yes, I so need this and I want to be able to understand the Bible more so that I can apply it to my life and know God more. Well, I will include a link down below uh, for you, you to get on the wait list for this course. It's coming out soon and I'll be releasing it at an early bird price for everyone who's on the wait list. So if you're thinking, yes, this is for me, click the link down below, get yourself on the wait list. And if you have any questions about it, just flick me a DM on Instagram at Elise underscore Hodge or send me an email. Hello at EliseHodge.com.au. Thank you so much for your time, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. If you found this helpful, give the video a big thumbs up down below. You know what to do. Um, click the notification bell to be notified about future videos. And I want you to comment and tell me one takeaway, okay? One key takeaway or something that stood out to you from what I've shared with you today. It could be that, um, you know, when I talked about the fear of God and what that actually means, or it could be talking about that expression of the garland or a chain around your neck. Comment down below and tell me something that helped you. And I'd love to hear also what else you would love me to dive into, what other parts of scripture so I can create more videos like this for you. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you later.